And the Bible says that there is no, no, no greater love than to give your life for your, for your friend. Early on, Apostle John said in 1 John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brethren. Our li uh, we are transferred from death into life because, we, because of our love towards our brethren. He who does not love abides in death. And in verse 15, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. It's like a murderer, killing, a sin of killing. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Now when you hate somebody, other people, eternal life cannot stay, dwell in your heart. I'm saying this with a very dire urging here. I, I love my... I love you. I love the members of our church as though I love my own children. I'm telling you again. And so as... As we read Psalm 133, verse 1, we should not hate our brothers. We have to urge each other, encourage each other, help each other. It says, how awesome, how good and how pleasant. And so, the title for today's message, as the title for today's message, the repairing work of the temple with thanksgiving and delight. King David did it with joy, with delight. With what? Through what? Through prayers and praises. And he describes his, sir, his worship. How joyful is that worship when the ears, the eyes, and the presence of God is in the temple. First Kings chapter 8 and chapter 9 tell us that God would watch us worship, hear our prayers, and thus pr worship is a joyful thing. When the brothers and sisters of faith come together in one place, pray together, and come to an understanding together, feeling thankf that thankfulness as we stare at each other, look at each other, wanting to help each other, encourage each other. That's the right attitude of the true believers. Praying together in one place, re receiving and listening to the Word of God together. Uh, how, how joyful, how pleasant that is. There's a man named, doc a theologian named Dr. Harris, Dr. Harrison or Harris, and he said, the time when the most people come to church is during, the, during a war. And he, he studied that, he made a sur survey, and he said, secondly, fir first, it is during the war, when the war breaks out. The most people come to church, and right after the war is the second And when, when they cannot find peace and safety in this world, they come to church to seek safety and peace. My, my son went, to the, went into the war. My husband went to the war. And, and that's why they come to church and pray. And Psalm 30 is a psalm written by David, it is, uh, it is used in the dedication of the temple. King David, listen carefully, later in his life realized and understood the will of God. And he prepared all the materials to build the temple of God. And imported all kinds of wood, all kinds of lumber from, from different countries, Gentile countries. And before his death, he said, God, I, would, I wish to build your house, your temple, before I pass away. He prayed it serious, sincerely for three times. But God said, 
I do not, I am not pleased to build, the, build my house through you. David was shocked. And the governors realized that his complexion changed. He was disappointed. He wanted to build the temple of God for the name of God. But when he prepared all the gold, silver, the, the steel, iron, and the wood, but God said, I don't want to build a temple through you, but through your son. Through your son, Solomon, I would be pleased to build my house. David probably, probably prayed, why God? And God said, you're a soldier. Blood of many people is in your hands. In, your, in, in, your, in wars and battles, you have killed many people. Do you think I'd be pleased to, to have that kind of hand build the temple of God? I will not even come close to it. And don't build it. Build it through your son Solomon. He said that. And this was written in First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 6 through 8. And First Chronicles chapter 28. Only two places tell us this. And so it is not with money that we build a temple of God. First, it is faith. And secondly, love towards God. And also, through the grace of God. Not through me, but through the grace of God. And so, and at the end, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 13 and the following, King David says, it is not something that I'm giving to God. It is God's. And that I'm returning to God. And God saw that and He was pleased. As David was on his deathbed, God heard that confession and blessed him. And you and I are worshiping in that kind of place. We sh I shed many, many tears as we were building this church. I prayed, fasted for three days without even drinking water. And this place used to be a place where they used to bring North Korean so spies, the communists, and this was an executing place, this place where Moriah stands. They used to shoot them and kill them. Early, early in the morning when they hear shots three, four, five people would be on the ground dead. And, and when, when this used to be the, Ar um, the Air Special Air Force base. And that's why I decided to build, uh, cut down this mountain and, b and this hill and build this sanctuary upon it. The Temple of God. And so the temple of God, and so because he could not build the temple of God himself, he told his son to do it. And, and he was imagining the time when his son would finish his temple, uh, building the temple, and dedicating that, church, that temple to God and wrote Psalm 30 uh, as he was he, looking forward to that day when the temple is completed and he wrote this Psalm, Psalm 30. I said, Oh, you with faith, sing, cry with, and pr sing praises to the Lord. O oh Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. O oh Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol, and so on. And but shout of joy comes in the morning. His anger is but a moment. And he, and he was imagining people coming to the temple, finding God's comfort and joy. In Psalm 90, Moses said, Even if we live a long life, it's only 70 or 80 years and when we come before God, 
you need to have some kind of something to to be proud of before God, to to be able to boast before God, saying, God, I did this. Will you just say, oh, I, I was busy living with my life, with my wife and my children. But there is a purpose why God gave you that family, your spouse and your children. It's, it may be good here, but kingdom of heaven is hundreds and millions of times better than this place. And God gave this family as a symbol, as a, as a shadow of the heaven, heavenly place, the, of heaven, kingdom of heaven. But if we are stuck to this, this, these shadows, and, and that's it, how pathetic that is. God gave us our families, God gave us all these things on this, uh, in this world as a shadow, as a reflection of what heaven is like, so that we can seek for a greater place called heaven. But if we cannot even seek for that place, and but get stuck with this, the shadow, that's pathetic. And in Yeoju, I took flashlight and went down to the septic tank and to the, to the pipes. Now, what p senior pastor of, a, of which church would go under into a septic tank? When we were building this place in our church, I went from from here all the way down to the neighborhood um, walking through the sewage t canal underground and and we filled all the cracked places we that's how we w were able to find the cracks and fill them and and mend them and why why do we do that because it is the holy land of god canaan was a land of the enemies and but from the day when God said to Abraham, I will give this land to you. That's when the land became a holy land, the land of God. And so, same with Yoju. God promised that place to us. It's a place where God promised us. It's a holy place, the land of God. And Elder Ko and two people went in and, and fixed everything. If not, it, the the sewer water, sewage would leak out and pollute the entire neighborhood. Would it be okay? I mean, I mean, it would be, it would be easier to let other people go in. Who would like to go into a septic tank, walk into a septic tank, tank that's 25 years old? But I did it because it, think, because I was thinking this is the body of the Lord. How, when it's cracked here, when it's hurt here, how much would it hurt his body? And because, because I, I have that kind of attitude and faith, although it's tiring, although it's hard, I do it with thankful heart. Physically, I'm only 80, uh, I'm 80 years old already. How many times would I go there? But uh, I'm doing this, we're doing this for you and your children. For, throughout generations. I'm telling the pastors and the workers, our children, when they grow up, they won't, maybe they won't be able, they won't even know how to, maybe they won't even know how to change ball, light bulbs. And so we need to think about that and, and make this place so perfect, so complete. And we need to teach them how to take care of this, this, these places so that they can maintain these places. And as as we went in it would it looks like it would cost more to fix it than to buy it but still we're so joyful pastors worked until 9 9 p.m. last night and i told them don't come until you finish what you were doing and i went outside and waited till about midnight and the temple of god Whatever is broken, I, I think of it as this way. Oh, Jesus' body is hurt. I need to hurry up and, and put a band-aid on it. Fix it. That's why I'm, I'm so busy doing everything. Do you think I'm, I'm a fool? It's easier to call, call them and tell them to do something. But I, don't, I have to be there because I care, care for it as though I would care for Jesus' own body. And that's why I, I put my hand on it and do it myself and 
in King David song, uh, made this song of the dedication of the house of God. And he says, he sings that people come into the church, to the temple of God, weeping and with the funeral clothes. But as they go out, they go out with joyful hearts. And may, uh, may that happen to all of you, I pray in the name of the Lord. Same with the Yoju Prayer Center. When we come in, we may bring all kinds of worries and concerns and mourning. But when we go out, we would leave all the burdens and go out with power, strength, joyful heart, delight, and hope and with the word that there is nothing impossible to those who believe. And when we do that, your houses, your families will prosper and the church will be revived and your business will grow. And I believe that will happen. There is a great wealthy man in USA. And I believe even elementary kids know him. Money is like, like spoon to him. Donald Trump, and he made a testimony. Two point. In the in the sixties or seventies, right before the seventies, twenty nine million dollars. He bought he b bought a ship, five story ship, for twenty nine million dollars. And one one hundred thirty crew. In the ship. One hundred thirty people. In the crew, as a crew, and on the on on board and. He would have to feed them all, pay for, pay them even more than regular sailors. How many rooms? 110 rooms on board. And 12 huge giant refrigerators. And which can contain food enough for 300 people to eat for three months. It had a barbershop, beauty salon, arcade, movie theater, and 800 movie films in that movie theater. Now, let's say you wrote on it once, and he, he said, I bought all this, but there's no satisfaction in my heart, life. And he said, the, the joy, the greatest joy I feel is when I go to church and help the poor and stay with my brothers and sisters of faith. Mr. Donald Trump, this is a confession that he made. Even after he bought this huge luxurious ship, he said, the greatest joy comes not from the ship, from this wealth, but from being with my brothers and sisters of faith at church. And you have to repair, and when you, when you, when you are able to operate and maintain a ship like this, you would need a great, a lot of money, even when beautiful women dance for you. There's, he said, there's no joy, no satisfaction. And, and he bought this ship wishing to find satisfaction from it. But he said, when I come to church, stay with the rich, the poor, all kinds of people, and become one in unity with them, and listen to the pastor's sermon, that's when I feel the most peace and satisfaction. That is true. You cannot find joy in this world. Joy is not in the money. The Bible says the love of the money becomes the root of all evil. It says that the, the money will come back and sting us in the end. And King David, as 
he got together with his brothers and sisters of faith, children of God, praising God, worshiping God, sharing with each other, saying, saying, I was blessed today because of this, because of that, I received grace, and so on. And truly with joy, delight, and hope, and may all the members of Pyongyangjae Church find greater satisfaction and joy than Mr. Donald here. Church, uh, the prayer center in Yeoju is a place full of grace. And I, um, I pray there and I feel comfortable and I feel pe the peace and the blessings and grace that we have received at Mumma will take it all to Yeoju. No matter what other people say, I don't listen to them. I live according to the word. I believe according to the word of God. That's why I find joy. What, what ghost? Uh, people say there's ghosts in that place. And it's because uh, there was a woman who committed suicide there. And I pray. I prayed there. Ask Pastor Yeon Cho. There's, uh, there's a person that killed four members of his family. And it was a house in Gimje a long time ago. It, w it was a place where four people were killed and blood on the walls. And we heard uh, of this, uh, about this haunted house and then we went there and bought that for cheap price because people didn't want to buy, buy, move into that house. And I prayed for those people who were killed. And I prayed and there was blood still on the walls. And there's, the neighbors came and, and I was sleeping in there. And they said, are you okay? Is it okay there? I said, it's okay, perfectly fine. And when you go to Hongjie, Hongjie Dong there, there's a two-story house next to a woman's, sc wom woman's school. And it, it's not being sold because it is known to be haunted. And I went there and prayed upon that house. I mean, God of all gods is God, is our God. And there is no ghost that would attack God, that would come before God. And so your heart should not be weakened. You have to, you have to be c courageous, strong. After Moses died, God said to Joshua, be, take courage and be strong. In Joshua chapter 1 verses 5 through 7 tells us this. And so even when you go through hard times in your life of faith, there's uh, do not lose your heart, do not be weakened, but please believe that God has given blessing upon your family, your children, your husband, your wife. And what kind of blessing is that? That is the blessing of eternal life. We'll stop about here. And my, my house, God says, is a house of prayer for all nations. That is the church. And Yoju is the same place. And please believe that it's a place where you will answer all your prayers and go there and pray. And we're fixing everything up so that you don't have to suffer. You don't have to go through have a hard time. I mean, the sewer, sewer system, we opened it up and the pipe is about this big, but it's filled with rust and inside. And all the boiling system, and we take it all out and put stainless steel and pipes and it, it costs about one hundred thirty thousand dollars to fix all the water tanks and you have to listen carefully when you you have to drink clean water and the water tanks have to be clean when you drink good water even cancer can be healed and and you know those wraps um, when you use when when you cook it's a company that makes those those wrappings, and they made it, made thick wraps and to cover up the water tank, so so the water doesn't have we don't have to drink water that was in a dirty tank, and it's to preserve the cl cleanliness of the water, and so and we have to drink we have to drink good water, and don't say don't say. Oh, how many times will I drink water here at Yeoju? Why spend so much money? But don't do that. We're doing this for everybody. Now, if this is a land here, it came up this much. 
and we cover, they just covered it up. I scolded at them. I said, this is, all, this is, peop, the church members will be drinking this water. And there's, there's moles and, and snakes and, and worms that can go into this tank if you leave it like this. And we opened it up and there were three snakes that drowned to death in that water tank. And we have a water water car, and we Pastor Yisingyan went in and took took out all those snakes that were drowned in that water tank and cleaned. We cleansed that tank, and 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 the water that comes down trickles down from the mountain. It's it's very it smells weird and. And when you wash your hair, it makes your hair very, very tough. And, and, and I said, you cannot drink this water. It's not potable water. And I said, let's, let's dig some wells here. And he's, the people who are digging the well asked me, Pastor, please pray and tell us where the water comes out. And listen carefully. We dug three wells and... It's three three hundred meters of of dirt and two hundred fifty meters of of rock uh, sediment and bedrock and we pierced through that drilled through that and now uh, very clean water very soft water comes out and water we the, the amount of water that comes out we can feed fifty million fifty thousand people at the same time and that's how much water came out e each each well cost 25 million one to 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 dig these huge huge drills and we need to drill big to get a lot of water and the machine was big and the pump usually usually they take they bring one but we brought two to to pull the water up and with with a water pump and we and we did all that work and we don't have to worry about water now and sewer system I I didn't feel real easy about that so I told them to open it up and it was filled with rusty dirt and and it's better to put new things in there and so we threw that away the rusty pipes and your pastors and evangelists or laborers of all laborers uh, uh, the worldly laborers and people who worked outside came and worked with them they said oh my gosh we cannot work with you we cannot we cannot keep up with you and they said how much do you earn by doing this that you are you're working so hard why don't you just kind of do it easy take it easy you think it would be okay f for us to give our work and let let those people do the do the work in in building the church of God, and so that your pastors are earning a lot of money, saving up a lot of money by working there, and a lot of time has passed. Let us pray together. God, the Yoju Prayer Center. We believe and please bless that place so that it can become a cradle for Pyongyang Jai Church's prayers. May all the members of the church give their attention and interest in that place. And all the prayer requests that we have, all the sins that we have committed, as we come and pray to you there, may we be cleansed of all kinds of sins and help us to meet you, God there and we thank you so much for all the pastors and evangelists all the work church workers that are working so hard we pray that they may receive blessings through the name of Jesus Christ throughout generations and may the same blessings and grace be upon all the members of the church and as we do the repair, repairing work of the Yoju prayer center we have thankful hearts. We have this delight and joy in our hearts. Help us please accept and receive our 
hearts full of love towards you. Help us to be faithful to the end. We ask all these things in the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.